It's widely understood that service marks are used to identify an organization's services and sometimes even distinguish them from services of competitors. But how do you get a service mark? And more importantly, how do you keep it? The 2009 case of Aycock Engineering Incorporated versus Airflight Incorporated examines this very question. Sometime in the late 1940s, William Aycock came up with an idea to launch a service that connected individual flight passengers with vacant seats on chartered flights. He called the service Airflight and worked towards building its infrastructure in the decades that followed. He obtained toll-free numbers for future customers to use to make reservations. And in the mid-1960s, he established Aycock Engineering Incorporated as the company under which Airflight would operate. In 1970, he advertised the air flight service to air taxi operators and ultimately entered into contracts with some. Later, in August of that same year, ACOC filed a service mark application for air flight. Four years later, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, or USPTO, registered the air flight service mark for the service of, quote, arranging individual reservations for flights on airplanes, unquote. ACOC renewed it 20 years later in 1994. However, ACOC was unable to get as many air taxi operators on board as he had hoped, and Airflight never became operational. In 2001, a company named Airflight Incorporated moved to have ACOC's Airflight service mark canceled, claiming ACOC never used the mark in connection with the service described in its registration. The USPTO's Trademark Trial and Appeal Board agreed with Airflight Incorporated and voided ACOC's Airflight Service Mark registration because ACOC failed to render the service in commerce that was identified in its Airflight registration. ACOC Engineering appealed to the Federal Circuit.